Hello everyone and welcome along to round 2 preview of Super Rugby. It was an absolute barnstorming opening round last weekend. We saw some fantastic matches. We saw our three new sides of the competition into action for the first time. We've seen some amazing matches, some spectacular tries already after just one round of the competition. And out of the nine matches, I called seven correctly for the winner, which, to be completely fair, I'm rather happy with how that has come out. Right, it is round two, though. We're going to have a look at the eight matches in round two. That means there's two teams having a bye. That are the, That is the Sunwolves and the Kings, both from the African conferences as well. And they'll be missing out on a match this weekend. But we still have eight matches to go. And as per usual, we're going to get straight into them. Have a little look at the matchup and, of course, my score prediction for each game. Okay, so in round one, there was two matches I specifically got wrong. And I think in the New Zealand Conference, it is going to be extremely tough to call the winners in these derby matches as well. And we kick things off in round two with another one that it is, to be fair, very, very difficult to pick. It is the Crusaders at home versus the Blues. Now, the Blues, of course, were the shock winners in round one versus the defending champions, the Highlanders, and the Crusaders went down in a narrow loss to the Chiefs as well. So, a, a very narrow win, a very narrow loss between these two sides. The Blues traveling away, which I think could be a, a pretty definitive difference in the sort of second round. Now, the Blues, of course, I think were the most prepared I've ever seen a Blues team going into a season. I thought that really caught the Highlanders off guard. And I don't think the Highlanders really played badly in round one. I just think the Blues were just that ready for the match. They were in that time, in that moment. And they just caught the Highlanders a bit short of where they should really be. But you got to credit Umanga, the new coach of this Blues team, he, he did the basics right here. He had the right men doing the right jobs. No one was doing anything they really shouldn't be doing. There was no filling a gap with a player that wasn't quite in that area. And I think that's where the Blues really do excel, doing their core roles back. Of course, they made six changes as well. They've got Jerome Kaino coming back from his suspension. But where I think this could be a bit predetermined by the Blues already is the changes they've made. With the likes of Bryn Horney, Higher West making way out of the side for round number two. So that could count against them. I think Hall was absolutely outstanding in round one. As, of course, was West. I think is, is a very, very talented fly half. But coming in, Billy Guyton, I think, did very well as well off the bench for the Blues. So not losing too much there. And it's good for the Blues early on to get that good squad feeling throughout the team. So... The Blues, a lot of changes, but the Crusaders, in round one, they looked very, very disjointed. I think there was no real link through their midfield. They got shut down as the ball went out of the 10's hands. And is that the the good defense of the Chiefs, or was that something to do with the Crusaders? Not really too sure. I've just won sitting through that match. I think they need to give Volavola a good run as well off the bench. He is off the woodwork this week. And... That's going to be key. I think they need to get him into the into the match, into the rounds. They've gone with the unchanged side, the Crusaders, into this round two matches. Um, and a complete difference to the Blues, who have changed a whole host of players. I think in this one, the home advantage is going to be the only difference between two sides. The Blues, a lot of changes, but a lot of continuity between their whole squad. Is that going to be good enough for them? The Crusaders at home, they like playing at home. And they've only got to get better. They were a bit lackluster, I think, in their round one match. The Crusaders, yeah, they're generally slow starters, but I think they'll get this one over the Blues. Haven't lost them in the last three meetings as well. My score prediction is 24-15. Crusaders, winners over the Blues. All right, straight on to our second match of round two, and as the Brumbies are at home, they're up against the Waratahs. Now, this is a big, big Australian derby match as well. Two of easily the only two good Australian sides. It's pretty fair to say they are the best of the best in Australia. The Reds, the Force and the Rebels we've already seen will not be up to that competition threatening standard that the Brumbies and the Waratahs 
will be at or are at currently at the moment. I think this is a great match. The first time we'll get to see the Hooper versus the Pocock battle, which is going to be massive. Those two really are the key, the core even, of these two sides. They need to be at the top of their game. Whoever wins that battle is going to go a long way to winning this match. But I think one key thing for the Waratahs is they cannot afford to go to sleep like they did against the Reds. Now, that second half there, the Waratahs versus Reds match was absolutely dreadful. Now, we've seen some spectacular rugby in the opening round, but that second half was the real low point of round one. The Waratahs can't afford to do that against the Brumbies. I think they'll get absolutely minced up if they do that in the second half against a team like the Brumbies. So that's going to be massive that the Waratahs can keep their eyes open for the full 80 minutes. Once again, this one will go a long way to deciding the Australian Conference winner. For my pick, I have the Brumbies coming out on top. 28 points to 16 over the Waratahs. Now we make our way into New Zealand. We are off to Hamilton, where the Chiefs will be up against the Lions. Now this is an interesting matchup. The first real cross between New Zealand and South Africa of Super Rugby so far this year. But what we've seen in round one was... A classy display from the Chiefs. They were just so good against the Crusaders. Damien McKenzie at fullback. Uh, his goal kicking along with Aaron Cronin back in the Chiefs colours this year after a long injury playoff. I think the Chiefs looked very good. And they looked like they had a lot more in the tank as well. They seemed to pick up these backs. Uh, the likes of Stevenson we've seen for the first time. They just perform at this level. Of course, he's now picked up an injury, which is going to see him miss this match. But they just find these outside backs that, you know, they just come from nowhere. And they perform at Super Rugby level, which is just remarkable that they've got so many of these performers that they can call on the Chiefs. So they're looking very good early on. I think the Lions, uh, they're professional enough. I think they've got to be one of the better teams to come out of South Africa. But it's always is the case that these South African sides struggle to come to Australia and New Zealand and beat the better sides as well. I think the Lions could go well to Australia and, and beat the Reds or the Rebels of Force or I don't know where they're going to pick up a win from in New Zealand though because it seems to really tip the South on its head at the moment but I don't think it's going to be against the Chiefs. They were good as I said professional and got the job done against the Sunwolves team that were very passionate as you'd expect in their first ever Super Rugby game but this one's going to come down to X Factor and 15 men or 23 men with that class that's just a step above from the Chiefs. And I'm picking them to come out 38 27 winners to the Chiefs over the Lions. Right, our fourth match of the round will be the Reds versus the Force. And this is a, a nice matchup to come up with as well. As the Force played pretty well, I think, against the Rebels in round one. The Reds, well, the, the Reds. Where do we start with the Reds? They were completely outplayed in the first half against the Waratahs. But they showed that they had the capabilities to break a line. They just didn't have that, that luck in their finishing. And it didn't get the job done uh, against the Waratahs. They were both average. Showed glimpses of what they can do. But I think this is going to be something uh, between these two sides that may turn into be a battle for the Wooden Spoon. With maybe a couple of other teams in that mix as well. But it win here for whatever scene that does pick up the win will go massively to keeping them off the bottom of the table. You have to credit the force though, picking up their new attacking uh, style of play uh, throughout the off season and trying to implement it into the match. You can see they're really trying to pick up that style of game as well. And I think come the end of the season, you know, they may pick something up, but it's gonna come against them here as it takes a long time to adapt to really changing your style around. The Reds then now need to pick on um, the big names that they've got in their team. The likes of the, the Carmichael Hunt, for an example. He's really been a letdown, I think, for Australian rugby as a whole. Uh, you really need to see something from him in this Reds team. They've got a few name players like him that really need to step up for this team. And I think they will, to a point, I think the Reds will be too good for the force and the final score for my prediction, will be 32-18. The Reds getting the win at home over the Force. 
Now we're back in New Zealand for our fifth match of the round, and it is the Highlanders up against the Hurricanes, a repeat of last year's grand final, except this time it is down in Dunedin at Forsyth Park Stadium, set to be a stunner. I mean, what have we come up against? The Highlanders, a team that got stunned in round one against a team that's normally a struggler with the Blues, and the Hurricanes, who went over to face the team they knocked out in the semi-finals in the 2015 to get absolutely thrashed, absolutely smashed, destroyed, run over, outplayed, comprehensively outdone in all aspects of the game against the Brumbies. But I expect the Hurricanes will be hurting massively from that game. I mean, there has been some, to be fair, extremely poor things said about this Hurricanes team in the Australian media, media especially. I mean... If you've heard these remarks, uh, who says something like that? It's just stupid. Really, is just stupid. But for the Highlanders, you've got to look at who is missing. Waisaki Naholo has out with another broken leg, which he suffered last year as well. So he's going to be out for a while. And there's no Fumiaki Tanaka either, who is gone. Now, I think the Highlanders, last week in round one, they refused to really inject their bench which I think did count, count against them somehow. Now, what really was a note was the number nine, the scrum half, the halfback, Aaron Smith, the best in the world, no question about it, but they were really, really reluctant to put Renton on for Aaron Smith. And I think that's something they really need to show the faith in this young Renton and put him on the field and get that fresh legs, that spark back into the base of the forwards. I think Ben Smith is an amazing form. He's got to be massive uh, after his performance in round one. He needs to continue that on. And I think uh, Malachi Fikatoa is another one who is going to absolutely dominate the midfield, which I could, I do think, is going to be a decisive factor. I was not too impressed with Asso and Lamape in that game against the Brumbies and Fikatoa. Well, he's right up there, isn't he, with the likes of Kieran Trani. So I expect much of the same as we've seen from Kurantrani in round one, from Fikitoa in round two. And that will be where the Highlanders will get the incentive, the go-forward ball and the line breaks through the middle of the park. And I'm expecting them to come out with their first win of the season, 30 points to 20 over the Hurricanes. And, well, rubbing that salt from the grand final last year. Make our way over to South Africa now, where the Bulls will be hosting the Rebels. Now, I think the Bulls, they played decently defensively against the Stormers in round one. I think the difference in that match was when the Stormers decided that it's time to attack. They left the Bulls behind. Now, I don't think the Rebels are really going to have much of a chance against this Bulls defense if they keep it like they did in round one. It's two teams that really didn't show a huge amount of finishing ability on attack. The Rebels, their intent was there. I think they showed more intent than the Bulls in terms of attacking. But against a very good defensive side like the Bulls showed in round one, comparatively to what they faced against the Force, they may find themselves in a bit of a struggle to really get the go-forward ball that they'll be after. The Bulls will be looking on their fourth pack as well to dominate the Rebels up front and gain, again, that initiative going forward, which will put them on the front foot ball, and then they can find these amazing backs that they seem to spit out as well to do some damage against the Rebels. I think the Bulls will run away with this one convincingly. They'll maybe take a while and get their confidence up and believe in that they can actually win this match, and then they'll blitz the Rebels 30 points to 8. The Bulls getting the victory at home. Right, we're on to our second last match now. This is game number 7 of 8. And it is the Cheetahs up against the Stormers. So this one is interesting because the Cheetahs were very fast out of the blocks in round one, as we saw against the Jaguars or the Jaguars, as they're natively calling. Fantastic team, the Jaguars, I think, but the Cheetahs took advantage. And you've got to credit the Cheetahs here to take advantage of the opportunity they had against the Jaguars to score those points straight away and try and shut that game down before it even really begun. Unluckily for the Cheetahs, once the Jaguars got going, they were completely taken out of the game. And we're playing now a team, the Stormers, who are not new to Super Rugby. 
They've had their little blowout, I think, in that first half against the Bulls. And I fear now for the Cheetahs, they're going to be starting this game like it was half time against the Jaguars. I think the Stormers are going to hit the ground running here. And I think they're going to be too good for the Cheetahs, who are going to struggle to really get going. I noticed in that match against the Jaguars, it was well between the Cheetahs and the Jaguars. Of course, the offloading of the Jaguars is really what destroyed the Cheetahs. The offloading game of the Argentinians was amazing. It was spectacular. And you just can't defend that stuff uh, most of the time. And that's really, I think, where they struggled. The Stormers will know that. They're a very skillful, very talented team. I really do like the Stormers side as well. And I'm expecting them to produce an 80-minute display like we've seen from the Jaguars in the second 40 against the Cheetahs. I'm expecting the Stormers to pull out that sort of gameplay for the 480. And they should destroy the Cheetahs. 46 points to 12. And take an easy five point win over their South African rivals so that's a big call, that's a big result as well but the Stormers side, they just look quite good don't they? Our final match then, it is the Sharks up against the Jaguars, now this is two teams that looked rather impressive in round one, I think this is my match of the round from round two, this is has the prospect to be an extremely exciting match and what I want to see is a full 80 minute display from the Jaguars. Now, I understand in round one there was the nerves, there was the butterflies, there was just that, you know, soaking in the atmosphere kind of thing first half from the Jaguars. I think they need to get over that now. They need to push that away and they need to concentrate and play a full 80 minutes. We know they can do it. We've seen the Argentinians do it before. But we need to see that from the Jaguars. And for the same token, we need to see that from the Sharks as well. And that could be the difference between the two sizes. Who will play that full 80 minutes of concentrated rugby? I think these two sides were very similar in round one as well. The way they played, slow starts, uh, defensive-minded or getting taken apart before they woke up. I mean, the Kings were quite, quite good against the Sharks in round one. They scored the first try, and the Sharks, although they didn't lose their composure, they were trailing, and the Kings were getting confidence. Same thing with the Jaguars on a lot higher scale, of course, conceding all those points, trailing by over 20 uh, just before half time, and they've stormed back. The Sharks are the same, and it's going to be a big match of who can play the whole 80 minutes. I also expect the Jaguars to gain some dominance in the forwards as well against the Sharks team. A very, very good forward pack. We've seen them mauling quite a lot in round one, and they need to stick with that. They can show some dominance in their forward pack against a decent South African team like the Sharks are. A good South African team. Let's not take anything away from them. Uh, that is a good place for them to start and build from into their electric backs. Both teams have the potential to win this one, but my pick is the Jaguars. 29, 25. If you can't tell already, I really like this Jaguars team. But I think the Sharks have an equally good chance of winning it. But you have to put it out there. You have to put the name on the line. And I'm going for the Jaguars via Whisker. Right, so that is it. That is eight matches done and dusted. Of course, Sunwolves and Kings have the bye this week in round number two. Now, of course, those are my picks and my margins. If you want to join in the fun and see how many points you can muster over the weekend, let me know in the comments below and we can have a little tally up at the end of the week. After seven out of nine from round one, I'm more than confident that we're going to go even better here in round two. So that wraps me up here for today. Thank you everyone for tuning in and watching. Hope you all have a great weekend watching some more amazing Super Rugby action. But until next time, get your picks in the comments below and I'll see you all wherever we may end up. Until then, thanks for watching and take care.